Okay, I think we'll get started. Um, just by way of introduction, my name is um, Laura Isles. I'm one of the co-directors of the North Central IPM Center. Um, we're one of four regional IPM centers supported by the USDA NIFA Crop Protection and Pest Management Regional Coordination Program. Um, we have a mission to really coordinate IPM across the region. And so we're really conducting this series um, to give the opportunities for project directors to report on their crop protection and pest management grants program and make sure that everyone in our region knows um, what the great things that are going on in IPM in our region. So today we're gonna have Philip Roseboom. He's from South Dakota and he's gonna talk about the South Dakota State Integrated Pest Management Program. And he's going to answer questions at the end, but as you um, think of questions, please just type them into the Q&A located um, at the bottom of your screen there. Type in those questions at any time and we'll um, address those at the end. So Philip, I'll let you go on with your presentation. All right, thank you, Laura, for that introduction. Um, like she said, I'm from South Dakota, obviously, and uh, I'll be covering uh, kind of the highlights of our uh, IPM program here at South Dakota. Um, so like she said, I'm Philip Rosebaum. I'm the SDCU IPM coordinator. Uh, my direct supervisor is uh, Dr. Adam Varenhorst. He's our SDCU field crop entomologist. The uh, reason I mentioned him, he is the, the PI for our EIP grant. Um, myself and Patrick Wagner are the co-PIs on that grant. Um, so a lot of the stuff, you know, that's written into that grant is done by Adam Varenhorst, Patrick, and I. So the first thing I want to show, um, it says our experts, but this is more or less some of our experts. This is kind of our core group, the ones that contribute the most uh, to our IPM program here at South Dakota. Um, and I'll just kind of run through them quickly because uh, a lot of these, uh, the programs and events that I mentioned in the presentation is run by this core group. First one being Adam Varenhorst. Again, he's the uh, field crop entomologist and the PI uh, for this EIP grant. Patrick Wagner, uh, he's based out of Rapid City. Um, he's our entomology field specialist and he, um, he answers a lot of questions out west as well does um, a lot of our entomology research out there. Amanda Bachman, she's our pesticide education and urban entomology field specialist. So she's the one that runs a lot of our uh, applicator training, our pesticide applicator training, as well as answers a lot of our questions for urban entomology and puts out publications for that. Uh, then there's myself, the IPM uh, coordinator, but I'm also um, more or less a research associate, a uh, field technician for Adam Varenhorst, so I'm responsible um, not just for IPM extension, but as well as a lot of our entomological research here in South Dakota. Uh, Jack Davis, he's more or less just our economics guy. So he puts out reports, you know, on the economics of crops and, and things like that. Andrea Bedornstead, she's our mental health specialist for extension. Um, we use her in some of our events. Um, she talks about uh, farm stress. Anthony, Anthony Bly, um, he's our soil field specialist. So he does everything that relates to soils. Uh, Christopher Graham, he's our uh, research farm manager out at the our, our brand new Sturgis research farm um, out west. Paul Johnson, um, he's a weed science coordinator. He pretty much knows everything weeds in South Dakota, very knowledgeable. Um, unfortunately, well, I guess fortunately for him, he is retired. Um, he is working quarter time until we find a replacement. So he is still around, um, but definitely, you know, his expertise um, will be missed. Uh, Connie Strunk, she's our plant pathology field specialist, so she handles a lot of our weed questions on um, publications and events. Connie Tandy, plant diagnostician, uh, she runs our diagnostic lab. David Karkey, he works out of Watertown on the east side of here of South Dakota. Um, he's our agronomy field specialist. He's the coordinator for the USDA SARE, uh, and he's our North Re Northeast Research Farm Manager. Uh, Jason Clark, he works very closely with Anthony, Anthony Bly. He's also a soil scientist. Uh, Jonathan Kleinjohn, he's our agronomist and field crops trial specialist. So he runs all of our variety trials for corn, soybean, wheat, and sunflower in South Dakota. So he's very busy. Uh, Sarah Bowder, she's uh, integral to the IPM program here. She does a lot of events, put lots of that together. Uh, she's our forage field specialist. And then lastly, Laura Edwards. Uh, she's our state climatologist, so she covers a lot of that. 
um, talks about drought and whatnot here in South Dakota. And again, this isn't everybody, but it's um, you know what I could fit on one page comfortably. So uh, today I'd like to cover our SDIPEM uh, program emphasis. And there's six areas of emphasis for our, our program. The first two I'll lump together. There are agronomic and specialty crops. Third is pollinator health. Fourth is pesticide applicators. Uh, fifth is public health. And then lastly is diagnostics clinic. So our first section, our first two sections of six, like I said, lumped together, agronomic and specialty crops. Um, some of our major crops in South Dakota is of course, corn, soybean, wheat, um, sorghum less so, but then sunflower oil seed and alfalfa. Our specialty crop, crops include confection, sunflower, uh, and then we do have a decent amount of field peas in South Dakota. Uh, so here's just a map I pushed, uh, pulled off the USDA. Um, Every South Dakota citizen knows uh, the descriptor we use East and West River. Um, and as you can see, that river, uh, Mississippi River, uh, splits South Dakota in two um, very distinct regions. So our east side of the state is a lot wetter, uh, much different climate. Um, that's where most of our corn and soybean. So the corn is the green, uh, yellow is the soybean. You can see it covers most of that region uh, in South Dakota. Uh, by Sully and Hughes and in, in towards the west is where a lot of our sunflower and small grains like wheat is grown. Uh, and then a lot of the western part of South Dakota is uh, rangeland and grass. Um, so very two distinct um, climates, more or less, between the west and east side of South Dakota. So our largest focus or emphasis is the first two, our agronomic and specialty crops. Uh, it's the largest part of our program. Um, it's made up of multiple different subsections. Uh, so the first one is research and scouting. And I apologize, a lot of my pictures and examples is entomology pictures and examples, uh, mainly because you know that's, that's what I do research-wise, as well as Adam, the, the PI for the, the grant, he's our entomologist as well. Um, but that doesn't mean you know our, our agronomists, our disease specialists, our uh, weed specialists, they do pretty much the same thing we are, going out in the field, running trials, uh, scouting to see what's out there. Um, but just some examples for our research on the picture on the left, uh, those little uh, orange um, larva, those are uh, soybean gallmage, so a brand new species, brand new pest here in South Dakota in the southeast part. Uh, we monitor for that. Uh, that picture of the soybean with the defoliation that's bean leaf beetle defoliation. Um, and this is all, you know, I go out, uh, one of our grad students go out and we, we just go look to see what's out there. Um, a black light trap we have, we monitor for moss, other flying insects throughout the year with that. Um, we work with Janet out of NDSU with the red sunflower seed weevil and the top two pictures there. Uh, so that top is a vial essay that we do every year. Um, and then we present the information you note know, at our a lot of our IPM events, um, field schools and stuff. Um, that one picture uh, with the sweep net, you know, we go out every week and we just sample to see what's out there. Um, and what we find, we uh, put in our newsletter, um, sent to our stakeholders and whatnot. And then that bottom picture is a emergence cage as well as a sticky card. Again, just monitoring, you know, for what's out there in the field. Um, our next. Uh, section of agronomy or just crops in general is field events. And I'm sure, you know, all the other locations, uh, states have this as well. We have five major farms, our, our SDSU farms, our Southeast Research Farm in the uh, Southeast part of the state, Northeast Research Farm, our Volga Research Farm, which is in the Middle East, right by Brookings main campus, our Sturgis Research Farm that started, I believe, three years ago. So that's at Sturgis, the very Western part of the state. Um, that was created to kind of facilitate uh, more of that Western um, crops, being that that's quite a bit different than what's grown on the eastern side of the state. Uh, and then our Dakota Lakes Research Farm, which is uh, very close to Pier, just east of Pier, South Dakota, so right in the middle of the state. Um, so every one of those farms usually has a field day, um, one field day uh, during the, the year. Um, but then also we have uh, two IPM field schools uh, events. Uh, the one, we have one at West River, um, which is at Sturgis Research Farm. And then this year we have one at the Volga Research Farm. 
And then of course we, we go to our state fair. Uh, so that top picture is from last year at the West River. Um, we had them go out, our participants go out and sweep a wheat field and then they came back and ID'd uh, natural enemies and uh, pest insects in that wheat field. Um, the state fair that's taken in 2018, but um, it's these in-person field events and, you know, just in-person where uh, we get all of our hard copies um, for people to, to pick up. And you can see there, um, we have basically all of our pinned insects. Uh, so people can come up, draws them in, and then we can answer questions about them. Uh, and then just, here's a, just a snapshot from our website. Um, our IPM field school, the East River one will be uh, next week, Tuesday. Um, so as you can see in the agenda, we're covering weeds, insects, um, that lunch Goldilocks, that's our climate from Laura. Um, biological agronomy is our soil scientists and then crop root diseases is Connie Strunk. Um, so hopefully we'll get good attendance with that next week. Along with our in-person events, you know, for our crops, we've also really picked up with virtual events. Um, this is something that really developed um, during COVID because obviously, you know, uh, at least here in South Dakota in 2020, we weren't allowed to have in-person events. Uh, 2021, we were, but only um, certain size, I believe 50 people or less. Um, so we came up with, um, in 2020, we called it the crop hour. In 2021, we called it the crop clinics. And what that was, it ran from um, January till March. Uh, every week we had a different topic. So here's an example of our uh, uh, 20, 2021 crop hour. Our very first week was on stored grains. Um, and it was all virtual through Zoom. Um, but every day we had a different speaker cover a different part of that stored grains. Um, in 2021, we did 12 weeks um, and then, uh, 2022 this year, we did eight weeks. We do reduce the size a little bit on that. Um, but the nice thing about that is uh, we had 90 sessions total through 2021 and 2022 with 1500 live attendees. Um, and at least here in South Dakota, that 1500 live attendees, that's um, a much larger attendance than we would have had if we just had in-person events. Usually a good amount of attendees for an in-person event, I would say is 40 to 50 people, uh, so pretty small. Uh, so it was great to put out that virtual, um, virtual event and you know get that really high attendance. Um, and also the nice thing with those crop hour and crop clinics is we upload a lot of those talks uh, to YouTube, um, total 82 videos. So not every video from the crop hour slash clinic made it to YouTube. Um, but since that time, we've had 3,200 views uh, since those videos went on to YouTube. So here's just an example of our uh, 2021 uh, playlist, 48 videos. And I took this uh, snapshot yesterday. So that reoccurring um, interaction is, is really nice. Um, another thing, the IPM field school. So we actually haven't had that for the past couple of years. In 2019, um, we had flooding at the research farm we planned to have it at. So we had to cancel it. Just nothing really was growing. I um, mean, it was too wet to really take people out into the field. Uh, 2020, obviously we, we didn't have the IPM field school. 2021, um, we wanted to have something. So uh, we created using training house a virtual IPM field school. And what that was, it had 38 instructional videos. Um, they could watch those videos and then they could take quiz um, to see what they learned. And then also if they passed that quiz, they got four out of five correct, then they would get a certificate where they could self-report uh, for CEU and CCA credits. Uh, so here's just a snapshot I took of the training house site. Um, you can see all these different modules. Once they finish the getting started, uh, section, then they could click on any of these. And you weren't forced to go um, or do any of these, you know, it's just kind of come at your own time, watch, do whatever you want to do. Um, the grain or stored grain insect pest management one is the one that I, that I have open. Um, and it just had one, one video within that. Uh, our insect resistance management one that had about eight different uh, videos and quizzes to do. Um, but attendance wise, you know, we had, I believe, 40 attendees or so, or 40 people log into it um, throughout, you know, since we had it up. Um, we also, it was nice, we spoke with some of the uh, professors on campus, and they incorporated this uh, training house into some of their courses. 
Uh, so we got interest, you know, from the undergrads, they got to see what IPM, you know, was doing uh, here in South Dakota. Um, and then with our crops, we also, of course, have our publications, and many of these are available virtually and in hard copy. One of our big ones is in the bottom left there, our pest management guides. Uh, so that's an annual release. Uh, it has quite a few of our specialists involved in it. Um, Shelby Pritchard, which some of you may have met at the symposium, IPM symposium earlier this year, I uh, myself are editors for that. Um, and then I just have a snapshot of our um, our sunflower uh, production um, book. I forget the exact title, um, but there's just a snapshot of chapter nine. It's weeds and sunflowers, um, but it also covers you know management tactics, um, insects, all your different insects, all your different diseases. Uh, whatnot in that book. And then, of course, we have some smaller handouts there um, that we put out. Uh, and then one of our last things for the crops is our newsletter. Uh, so it's a monthly from November to April and then weekly from May to October release. Um, we have about 2,500 subscribers uh, to that newsletter. And in total, we literally put out two to 250 articles per year. Um, and then it is archived, um, you know, for people to reference, for us to reference as well uh, for previous years. So here's just a snapshot, snapshot of the one that came out um, just this week. Um, so uh, the best management practices for sunflower production, people can click on that and learn about it. Uh, the weekly newsletter, um, it's very timely. So a lot of cases, at least for insects, I'll go out, I'll scout you know, our multiple fields, check our black light traps, our sticky cards. And if I find something of interest, you know, I'll tell Adam and he'll put out an article uh, for that newsletter. And it's, it's mainly there. Well, it is there just to keep, you know, our stakeholders informed of what's out there, what to look for, what to scout for, um, and just, you know, timely general knowledge for agriculture. So our next section is uh, pollinator health. And of course, uh, for us, an important part of that promoting pollinator health in South Dakota is research. Uh, so the research wasn't funded by the EIP grant, um, but we use a lot of the data we collect from that in our presentations, in our handouts um, to inform them. Uh, so here's just some pictures. Uh, we use bee bowls in sunflower and soybean, and we would sample that once a week throughout um, uh, the growing season. There's a picture of a, of a bee. Um, and then the really nice thing about that, um, we did it for a couple of years and we collected a very robust thousands of bees uh, voucher samples. Um, so there's just a picture of one of our, our Cornell drawers uh, full of, of bees. And we use that, that knowledge that we gained from research to put out articles and guides. Uh, so this native pollinator plants of South Dakota for Maine's landscapes that came out before I started as IPM coordinator, um, but you can see Amanda, Adam, and Pat put that together. And what that is, it just, it, it provides, um, you know, our, our stakeholders an idea for, this is more gardens more or less, but um, what to grow to bring in those pollinators, promote pollinator health. Uh, and then in the newsletter, um, you can see this was published May 27th, written by Shelby Pritchard. Um, we put out, um, you know, beneficial pollinators. So how to ID your honeybees and bicolored striped uh, sweat bees, amongst other ones. This is just one of our articles that we put out. Um, and then lastly, uh, pollinator workshop. I, we haven't done one for a couple of years now. Um, you know, because of COVID, but even before that, I, I'm not even sure when the last one was. Uh, it certainly has happened since I was uh, IPM coordinator, which I started uh, in 2018. Um, but we're working with Amanda Bachman um, to kind of get that put together again. Um, so hopefully next year we'll, we'll get something like that out. Our next thing is pesticide applicators, our fourth one, and Amanda Bachman, our pesticide education slash urban entomology field specialist. She is the main uh, organizer for this stuff. So uh, she works with the USDA and plans um, our private and commercial applicator training for the state of South Dakota. And that's um, early on uh, January, February, March of the year. Um, and that's when we hand out, give a lot of our uh, handouts uh, during those events as well. So it's a good outreach. A lot of our specialists are there giving talks. 
um, but also our field schools. Uh, so uh, the IPM field school next week, we created a blackout booth. So you can see in that left picture, um, that's just set up in our shed. Um, and it's a blackout. Inside is a black lights um, and we use fluorescent dye. We sprayed it onto that Shelby um, in that PPE. Amanda's crouched down in the man or Adams to the right there. Um, we'll have that set up at our field school next week. And we just want to show our stakeholders, our attendees, you know, the importance of PPE because uh, that fluorescent dye will uh, fluoresce in that black light. Um, and we can just demonstrate the importance of that. Um, as well as during our presentations, during these applicator trainings, we're still using uh, reference photos, uh, like fluorescent uh, pictures um, from, I don't know, the 1970s or so. So we, we created this uh, for attendees, but also to get new photos, uh, up-to-date photos for that. Uh, and then our publications, our biggest one I've mentioned throughout is our pest management guides. Uh, so we have uh, uh, and oil seeds, we have corn, we have soybean, and of course our wheat. Uh, and what they, what they are uh, involves a lot of our specialists, as you can see in that uh, second to the left uh, uh, picture there. Um, it, it covers all our different pest or pesticides um, for all of our major crops in South Dakota. And it's just there to keep our our attendees well informed and they can take this book, this hard copy out, out with them to the field and reference it. Um, so it gives your mode of actions. Um, and then that picture on the far right um, shows your fungicide and insecticide pro products. Um, but you know, it covers all the pesticides, but it gives you a re-entry uh, intervals, your application rates, what are your target insects, um, as well as uh, restrictions. And that's an annual, annual release. So um, we'll start our 2023 uh, pest management guides uh, sometime in September. We'll start working on those. So our fifth emphasis for our, our SDIPM is our public health. And a lot of this is just a compilation of articles and guides. Um, so our, our latest one is uh, ID Guide to Texas, South Dakota. I mean, as you can see, Adam, Amanda, Phil, or myself and Pat uh, worked on this, um, but we're also nearing completion of a Arthropods of Human Health Concern handout, hard copy. Um, and then also through the newsletter, uh, we put out articles as well. So you can see here, preventing tick and mosquito bites. Um, it's very important, at least with mosquitoes here in South Dakota, I believe South Dakota has the highest per capita incidence of West Nile. Um, out of, you know, out of the, in, in the U.S. Uh, so we always try to keep our, our uh, stakeholders, our newsletter readers well informed to protect yourself against that. Um, in events, uh, some of our public health, mental health, um, Andrea Bajornstead, we've had her speak at some of our crop hour events as well, as some in-person things about mental health, uh, farm stress. Um, and that really started in 2020 uh, as when we started, you know, really, uh, emphasizing that. Um, and then lastly, um, Amanda, Pat, and Adam, they get a lot of questions um, uh, pertaining to insects. It seems like public health, at least here in South Dakota, pertains mostly to insects. Um, mosquitoes being one of the big ones, you know, because of West Nile, um, but we also get a lot of bat and bed bugs, uh, ticks, uh, and then also West River. Um, so by the Rapid City, Sturgis, that area, uh, they have black widow spiders. Uh, so they get a lot of questions about that as well. Uh, and then our last part is our diagnostic clinic, our last emphasis, and that's uh, run entirely by Connie Tandy there, our plant diagnostician. Um, here's just a snapshot of our website for that. Um, what it is, is people can send in uh, plant samples and she will ID whether, you know, it's insect damage, disease damage, um, and send those results back to, you know, whoever. Um, in that uh, statistics service area, um, we've serviced over 1,900 or 19,000 client samples since 2007, uh, and Connie averages about 1,500 samples per year, um, and that's really nice. So I, I forgot to mention, uh, every Monday at 9 o'clock, we have a uh, agronomy call, is what we call it, and basically all of our specialists join in on the Zoom meeting, and we discuss, you know, what we've seen. 
um, what we think will be a problem, just to kind of uh, get a good idea of what everyone's doing. Uh, and with that, that's how we kind of decide on what goes in the newsletter based on that. And Connie, she always tells us, you know, what sample she's receiving. Uh, so just last week, our meeting, um, soybean cyst nematode, she started getting more samples of that, you know, that finally started picking up. Um, but before that, she really hadn't received a whole lot of samples, mainly because it's been pretty dry here in South Dakota. So uh, here's some required slides for me to show. Um, here's my contact information. Um, again, I highly re recommend just uh, if you have any questions, send that to my email there, philip.rosebaum at sdstate.edu, mainly because during the, the growing season, I'm hardly ever in the office. Um, you know, we're out, out in the field doing research and whatnot. Uh, and then also Adam Varenhorst, my supervisor and the PI for this. Um, there's his email address, Twitter, as well as his office number. So with that, uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Philip, for God. We got you out of the field for at least a half hour yeah, to, yeah. to hear about all the great things you guys are doing. Um, so um, attendees, feel free to type in any questions um, at the bottom of your chat there. But as we're waiting for anyone to type in questions, um, just you mentioned how you guys kind of swiveled to online programming with COVID, mm -hmm. you know, many universities do, but like, what do you see as kind of some of the new challenges as we're moving into, I, I guess we could call it post COVID yeah. world at the moment? Uh, so the largest or our challenge now is South Dakota, it's a pretty sparse state. Um, so even though we got a lot of good participation in our online events, um, there's still people we're missing and mainly because just internet in general isn't that great in the rural parts of South Dakota. And it, it could be the same in other states. I, I'm not entirely sure. Um, and then another challenge that is somewhat surprising, I guess, um, our attendance for in-person events are down. Um, and I don't know if that's common in other states or not, but, uh, uh, you know, people maybe don't want to go out as much after COVID. We're not entirely sure. Um, but I suppose it is what it is, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out and hopefully we'll build those numbers back up over time. I, I know here in Iowa, the consensus seems to be that people don't want to register for things. Sometimes they're interested in going, but there seems to be a reluctance to commit. Yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, the IP and field school next week, I definitely have seen that. <laughs> Registrations aren't as high as they used to be, but you know, hopefully we'll have some people show up in in the morning when it starts. So, yep, yep, that seems to be how it works. Yeah. Um, what do you see as kind of like the greatest opportunity for growth in the South Dakota IPM program? Um, so uh, one of the bigger things. You know, I kind of mentioned it a little bit. Pollinator health. We've done some research in the past. Um, but besides that, in a few publications and a few articles, um, there's a lot more I think we could do, um, especially expand, in, expand more into uh, like gardening, um, which will be easier now. South Dakota just hired a new um, horticulture specialist, Christine Lang, um, and she's kind of taken a lot of uh, responsibility in expanding that. Um, so I think that pollinator health, uh, and as well as, um, just more outreach in general. You know, we have um, a few virtual events here and there, um, but I think we could increase those. Um, and then, as I mentioned in the, in the first question, uh, trying to get those in-person events, um, kind of, you know, increase the number of those, uh, interaction with those. Very good. Christine's a graduate from Iowa State University, so I worked with, she worked in the clinic for a little bit, so oh. <laughs> pretty well. I don't see any questions from our attendees. So I will thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today. We really enjoyed it. Um, I just want to remind everyone that our next webinar will be Wednesday, August 17th, where Ashley Dean from Iowa State University will be speaking on um, creating a regional, regional trapping network for corn rootworm adults. And I just dropped into the chat um, the, the links to our website where you can learn about upcoming webinars, 
um, view previous Pest of Progress webinars. Um, so this webinar will be up um, pretty quickly and you should get an email about that as well. Um, and then we also have the central um, our, to uh, subscribe to our newsletter as well. So all those links are there in the chat. And so thank you again very much, Philip. And thank you to everyone attending and have a great rest of your day. Thank you for having me.